Hey guys, Crewman here with another shed update. This is my fourth shed update in January, and it seems like every week I've been making some changes. Not too big, but enough, as I've been able to get some graphics cards for cheap. I need to make space, and I really don't want to spend money on non graphics card parts or as little as possible. So I want to make do with what I have. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two big Navi rigs. They're 11 GPUs total, and I'm going to combine them. Now, I bought two BTC motherboards for super cheap. God bless the bear market in that regard. And I'm going to, and I bought a 12-card frame. I'm going to combine them, and I'm going to put them both right there. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this rig and this one, 11 EVGA 3070s, and I'm going to combine them all into one rig. And I'm going to put them where this 3060 rig is, 3060 Ti rig is. Now, I can organize the PDUs a little bit because I have a lot of spare power on one of them as one's only using one rig. And none of these are close to max as of now. So, you know, I'll have to maybe reorganize a few plugs here and there, but it should work. Which will then give me, I'll have an extra space here and here for more GPUs. And while we're on the subject, one other thing I actually had thought about was combining the uh, those two 3070 rigs, or you know, one of these rigs up here, and combining them and just freeing up more space, which I might do in the future. I'm going to take it slow. I'm going to take it steady, because I think if I raise this right, if I raise this one up, I can put two 12 card rigs down on this shelf. And then I have my 37 or my 3080 rig, which helps with the thermals a lot. And I have, and I'll put one more 12 up there. And then I can probably put two 12s up there, which means I can free up quite a bit of space for more G, for more expansion. Now I'm still very bullish on GPUs. However, they have to be the right price. You know, I have my price that I want to pay for 3070s and 3060 Ti's. And frankly, if we're being honest, the only GPUs I'm in the market for right now are 3060 Ti's, 3070's, and 6700 XT's. Now I will buy 60, 3060's if I can get them for very, very, very cheap, I will buy them. But other than that, those are the only three I wanna buy. Uh, I have decided to keep my 5700 XT rig right now. Prices are very low. Um, I don't think I can get what I want for them. So I'm just gonna keep it because they are currently profitable. Now. If I can sell them for the price I want, I will, so that could change at any time. But however, reorganizing my rigs will give me space, which I need, and I have the, you know, I have the power to do it. And it will help me uh, save a little bit of power, actually, by only requiring one motherboard per 12 cards, where it would normally be two. And also, I'm going to take the spare motherboards, RAM, and CPUs that I'm not using, and I'll probably keep one extra set, maybe two, but I'm going to sell them because, you know, it'll just help cover the cost uh, and it'll help, it'll help cover the cost of my frames and any other minor parts I need to buy. Thankfully, I have a huge box of risers right here, so I don't need to worry about that. But yeah, that's my current plan. Um, I would like to have these changes done in a few days. As soon as I get time, you know, life's a little busy, but that is my plan. Currently, those new GPUs I have are mining in the are mining in the garage, and as far as my Turing rigs go, my Turing GPUs, uh, I think I'm going to sell them. It really just depends. It's kind of like the 5700 XTs. They're still profitable and they still have their uses. So if I can get what I want for them, I'm going to sell them. If not, you know, I'll just keep them. So here's one more view of the shed. <clears throat> it's nice and cool. I'm really happy with the way it's working. Uh, and my plan right now, as well as far as ASICs go, is not to get any right now. Uh, I'm not sure what I would want. And my mining strategy just revolves around finding the next best coin and trying to get in on it early and selling it or holding it to cover my electric, some, at least some of my electric. I'm, I'm selling to cover at least half of my electric bill because I'm not comfortable paying out of pocket for any more of it in the current state of the market. So I'm currently just gonna stick with GPUs for now that could change, you know, like I said, we're taking this week by week, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, so All right, and here you can see my GPUs that I did buy on test benches. 
I've got the five that I bought, the four thirty seventies and the one sixty or the one thirty sixty, and then I've got the two Turing rigs, the two Turing GPUs. I'm sorry, right there, and then I've got the thirty seventy that I had issues with that I moved out here just to test it. So these are running in a mix of Windows and Hive. I don't know if you can see it, but I spent a bunch of time cleaning up all the wires on my bench because I really don't like when it was messy and I got everything running straight and it looks all clean. So uh, what I'm thinking is I'm going to take these boards out of the out of this case and maybe out of this one and I might sell one of them if I can get any money for it. If not, I'll just keep it. Um, and I was going to take the old frames from outside and I was going to make one six one windows frame and one hive frame which I can do you no know, I was thinking about keeping this this way but it kind of takes up a lot of space I feel like I could ma ma maximize the space and I'm not using the frames so I, I don't know yet uh, I might just keep the frames too well we'll see but anyway I just want to show you these GPUs as well so let's get into what I'm mining and if I'm profitable so on to my mining strategy from the past week so if you looked at the price at the end of filming last week, it was around eight. Next, it was around eight fifty one USD, and if you look at the difficulty, it was around four point six terahash as of last week when I filmed. So I wasn't really comfortable with the price versus the terahash because the price actually didn't really go up from the week before. Um, you know, not enough to justify the increase in my eyes. So I actually switched all of my NVIDIA rigs off of Nexa last week. And I went to a new coin that I had heard about called Dynex. So without getting into Dynex too, too much, because I'll do another video on it uh, at another date, probably uh, next week would be my guess. Um, basically, Dynex is a decentralized supercomputing platform. The reason I liked it was it was different. Uh, it uses proof of useful work. Basically, it's got its own miner. There was no pre-mine, which I really liked. It was based on memory size of cards. That was when I was thinking about trying out my 3060s and my 3090. And they did well on the coin, and I liked the way the price was going, so I figured I'd give it a try. However, as of January 23rd to the 24th, there began to be some problems. There were some issues with the miner because what Dynex is, is it uses its own miner. So there's only one way to mine it on multiple different pools. And there was there was issues with the miner. And then there was a big price dip, uh, over 30% at one point. It's recovered a little bit. Uh, it's recovered about 10%. But when you get a big price dip like that on a newer coin, you get a little nervous, to be quite honest with you. Uh, now, I was lucky and I've done very well off Nexa this past month, so I felt like it was okay to take a risk and move on to Dynex. Now, I did not sell my Dynex coins. However, with the issues in the, with the miner and the, the sudden dip in profitability, I was not comfortable sticking with, with Dynex. Now, that's not to say I don't believe in the coin because I have a nice bag of it and I could see myself maybe going back on it in the future with one or two rigs and you know, maybe mining that along with Nexa. But currently, I have moved off Dynex. And another issue with Dynex is it only supported uh, NVIDIA GPUs right now, which I was not the biggest fan of. One thing I did notice in the last few days, though, was the difficulty has gone up, but it hasn't gone up as much. Like, it hasn't doubled. It went from 4 terahash to about... 4. Point, you know, 4 terahash to about 6.6 .6 terahash, which is not the worst. And so the yield did go down. However, the price of Nexa has, however, the price of Nexa has gone up and it, it's it gone up a decent bit. It was 8, I think it was 8.40 when I last talked to you guys. Now it's 11.40. So it actually has gone up more than the hash. So you are theoretically making a little more this week than you were last week. Now, another thing that kind of swayed me back to Nexa 2 was the fact that there's more than one pool now. Wooly Pooly is now on Nexa, and I really do like it. And an interesting thing with Wooly Pooly that I was able to confirm yesterday, and Mind Sum 10 helped a lot with this too, so shout out to him. Um, Wooly Pooly is actually front-loading the payments, so... People are getting paid on Wooly Pooly in about three days instead of seven days using our plant or Viper Pool. 
So that was nice too because it's nice, you know, one of the negatives of Nexa was that you weren't getting your coin for seven days. Now that was good in the beginning when the price was all over the place and we didn't know if it was going to be stable or not. But now that we're over, you know, we're almost two months in now and Nexa's proven to be as stable as a two month old coin could be. And like I said, if you look at the, the price of Nexa, it's, you know, let's look at the 30 day. I mean, it's done pretty well. So I never actually fully stopped mining Nexa. It was just my AMD cards that were on Nexa. And they are still unfortunately on Wild Rig and our plant pool. You know, decentralization is important. And I think it's good to not be on the biggest pool. But also at the same point, I think that there needs to be more pools on Nexus still. But you know, this is an improvement from, you know, two weeks ago when it was our plant on 99% of the hash rate. Another very important reason I switched back to Nexa is the fact that I can now dual mine Nexa plus Zill with BZ Miner on my NVIDIA cards. Now, uh, I'm a big fan of Zill. Uh, a bunch of people I know that are, you know, that I value their advice greatly in terms of mining have all started dual mining, have all been dual mining. So I think it was time for me to start dual mining Nexa plus Zill. So my mining strategy this week is to dual mine Zill plus Nexa on my NVIDIA rigs using Wooly Pooly Pool and BZ Miner and my AMD rigs unfortunately have to stay on our plant pool using Wild Rig. So I will be all in on Nexa mining again this week. Now, you know, as far as Dynex goes, I definitely will make a video on it. It's definitely interesting, but right now, you know, there's some troubles with the miner and I'd like those to get resolved before I recommend anyone going on to Dynex because when you're not mining, you're not making any money and Graphics cards are not making that much money, period, right now. Uh, so you need to be mining at all times. You can't have downtime. So I I have not sold my next, or I've not sold my Dynex. Not, none of this is financial advice, by the way. This is just me telling you my plan. Um, and I don't plan on selling my Dynex right now. I think I'm going to hold on to it like I've done with my Caspa. As far as Nexa goes, you know, I have price points I need to sell at to pay for my electric. And I've already paid... My electric rate bill is already paid this week, this month, and I'm going to be funding three fourths of it, not one half of it, and I will be keeping all of the rest to hot, as hodling. That is my strategy, my plan this week. Uh, I am happy with the fact that Wooly Pooly Pool is only about a three day payout right now. It kind of makes me um, more comfortable with you know going all in on next a week by week. So it you know, just kind of helps in case the price is t will tank, which it hasn't, so it's okay. So yeah, that is my, that is what happened last week. That is my strategy for the coming week. I hope you enjoyed my, my farm video. Um, so January has proven to still be profitable. And uh, I mean, you know, we're almost done the month and I, I gotta say, so far I'm very happy with the results. If we can keep this up, you know, for the next year, it, it will be a good year. I don't know if we can, but you know, here's hoping. So I have one more profitability video for January, and then you know we'll move on to February and, and see what February brings. And I have some big changes to the farm next week, as you've seen. I'm you know I'm going to be organ reorganizing a lot of graphics cards. So I really hope you enjoyed this mining co farm content. Please like and subscribe for more of it. I know your time is valuable, so thank you for spending it with me. Crew man out.